saloon where a lot of the action took place of Back to the Future Part 3. Come on inside and I'll show you. Cheap construction, not made to last. Come on in. Just kind of cruising down the old... Right up these steps. Pause. As well, to show more fake movie set magic, we have nice fake rocks here. And if more you look, glass. right yeah. over here, you have some paint that's been actually chipped off, so you can tell. The entire building is made of plexiglass, and they did a remarkable job in painting it too. Millions of dollars were spent on this set, literally. Um, but it wasn't built to last, as you can see over here. Very realistic looking rocks. Listen to this. It's just fiberglass. These bricks, wood with fiberglass coating on them, you can see it's really peeling away pretty bad here. Um, all the windows rattled, built like they were in the 1800s. And this painted to make it to look like steel, like steel doors on a jailhouse. That's what this is here. It wasn't sanded right and now the paint's peeling off. Um, oh well, you know, they'll, they'll use it again sometime for something else. Pitching posts we see. All had troughs in front of them when it was being filmed. They've taken basically all the props back because they are expensive. This tree and that tree over there, right next to that building, all brought up here and transplanted in. All this sagebrush here was transplanted in to make it look realistic. Over here we have a small little cabin. And these rocks have, looks like moss and stuff on the rocks. It's just green paint. You know, painted to make it look like it's been there for a while. More sagebrush transplanted. Another building here. And this tree here is one of the few things they kept for the original. Uh, it was originally here. Right, it. Peeled paint was done on purpose. Sagging roof. The door frames that are crooked. And a fence that just is just wiggly, you know, I mean, that's just the way it was. You know, to go out the whole entire shoot, like this. And the inside is nothing but a dirt floor. I'm not going to open the door because it's, it's kind of stuck right now. But And out right over here, we have a schoolhouse. Where a few scenes were filmed. So all these here were just tents, we're just uh, with canvases over them. Just tell me when. Okay, uh, we're talking here, the train depot. This water tower, believe it or not, was built only during the summer and it looks very old, very realistic, and it doesn't hold a drop of water. They actually have plumbing, a plastic pipe that goes from inside and then just drops water out to spout. Now, to make the spout look old, well, that's an actual old spout. They went and they found the most beat up and rugged looking spout that they could find. This here is the sign, if you can see it, that you'd see from the road that was camouflaged during shooting. If you pull back, these set of trees right here were purposely put in by the crew in Universal Studios so that you couldn't see the road from shooting for certain angles. Did do a good job of camouflaging the road. This is a very nice set, built to last. A lot of the things that we passed by were just false fronts with storage areas in back. But as you're coming, you'll see how typically they do things on a movie set. All of this in here is bogus. They would 
it wasn't made for anything. The roof has some holes in it. And over here, to get the effect of smoke coming out of it when they were, would shoot in certain angles, you have this pipe here, and they burn, they burn pieces of rope like this here, see? They burn this rope up the chimney, and it would create the effect of smoke coming out. So you'd think that these were operating buildings, and you get the idea. The ticket counter guy, obviously, where they would need shots from the outside, this is the only place that they took any time in putting any detail in. As you see, it's nice and finished, and they would obviously have had a lot more things in here when they were using it. But this is the only thing they took any time to make anything extra. And out here, it's just like, like I showed you, there's nothing. I'll explain to you that by the time Michael J. Fox gets to the past, which if you remember at the end of the second one, he's stuck back in 1955 while the dock is back here in 1880-whatever. And uh, he's got, he gets back here and he finds the dock living inside of, this, in, inside of here. If you remember at the beginning of the first one, he's got all these contraptions and stuff that dump dog food and all that kind of stuff. Well, inside of here, come on up these steps. The roof to this building has a lot of holes in it. But right over here, we got another, more fake bricks. But this what served as kind of his breakfast area. And he had a lot of things dumping eggs that would cook his breakfast for him. So a contraption to cook breakfast for him. And here was the stove that they've removed a lot of the stuff from. And it, he had his, uh, supposedly the first western bath that sat right up here. And it sat right up here, and a lot of this, this is where he lived, basically, back in the 1800s. And he had his bathroom here. Everybody else has an outhouse. But no, Christopher Lloyd, he gets an inside house, see. It's an inside bathroom. So. This is where he stayed. You can see it's a pretty large area. And look up at the ceiling. It's pretty big, pretty nice. Well, well done, if you ask me. Then again, you're probably not, so. Well, that was the barn we were just in. This was the movie theater that was under construction was under construction, and so was the clock tower, because at the time that they go back, these things were still being built. And uh, wind damage again for this building. Okay. And this, you can expect the same kind of chase that you saw in the first one and the second one right here in this area, where they chase around on wagons. Michael J. Fox, right over here, he steps in some horse crap. He almost gets run over by a wagon, dodges out of the way, and he steps in a pile of horse crap right over here. Okay, be sure to get that bank there. That's a cool looking bank. You've got to include the Wells Fargo in there. And if you remember from in Back to the Future Part 2, that's who the letter carrier was who delivered that letter to Michael J. Fox. So, oh, uh, no. Again, the water, the water tower back that way. But check this out. Check what the wind did over here. Behind this movie theater. Blew all of this down here. Ah oh, man. Blew all this down. So, well, we showed you pretty much everything except for a few small buildings like this one over here. Over here, just a two sided false front, three side, uh, two, yeah, two or three sided false front. Behind it's where the painters were. They uh, painted all the signs and everything and that kind of thing. Back over here. Right back over here is where Michael J. Fox played volleyball in his spare time. Yeah? Do me a favor, 